Hello and welcome to uh, this video where we're just going to look at rain gardens on the west coast of BC. Uh, in the past several weeks we've been inundated with rain and the question is how are you going to deal with the rain and where is it all going to go uh, if you have a level lot like we do. And as you can see um, it is a dugout from the soil where I really found that the water was accumulating. You can see just to the side of that you can see a bit of standing water in the lawn and it accumulates so I'm like what am I going to do? I don't want the backyard to become a lake so we turn to this rain garden idea and as you see we have dug it out and put some uh, rain garden type of plants in there. But just to gain an appreciation, we did hear from a neighbor that historically this whole yard would turn into a bit of a swamp. And so I really wanted to correct that to prevent erosion and so on. So obviously the plants that we're going to choose will be uh, water loving plants uh, that thrive in uh, deep water and in uh, continually moist environments. And so just dig it out, mulch it and then have it to a capacity where as it reaches and as it is it increases in height that it does have a flood gateway um, if you will to let the excess run off into a little stream like that so after that fills up enough it starts pouring down there and then down the rain garden um, where i'll show you momentarily where it goes so it all pours into there and goes down there and obviously we want to control water for both erosion and for flood control right like I don't want this swamp coming closer and closer to the house where it could present issues with flooding and so on so I'm going to direct it towards my you know cedar hedge that I have there there's Liesl and Cypress uh, cedars and then channel more of that water down to some other water hungry uh, evergreen emeralds uh, where it will uh, serve as a water s supply for them and, and just keep running that along again and as you can see past here through some drain rock and at this junction there's a, a couple other rain gardens that kind of um, converge into there you can see some of the PVC piping I've installed which is drain piping and a little water flow you can see the flow of water flowing down to this area and then down to that juncture there where a couple drain pipes meet and I just put the drain pipe in there to make sure that there was good adequate uh, drainage and then also to gain access uh, to the st steel shed there so I thought throw down some pipe cover it with drain rock and mulch um, drain rock um, I don't like particularly around uh, lawns when for when we're doing lawn maintenance it can get in the way of the weed eater and the lawnmower and cause damage so um, I recommend just mulch I'm really trying to thin out the drain rock at this time and there you can see again directed away from your neighbor's house you certainly don't want to uh, channel flood waters to your neighbor's house keep it on your thing and you just use it where it is feeding the rain garden um, digging it around the bend here it's uh, feeding some uh, different types of, uh, of rain garden plants uh, as you can see to the left and to the right we have a rhododendrium going it seems to be doing fine there it likes the rain garden so far and some other types of grasses and that is a uh, black-eyed Susan a purple one in the middle there that is gonna do really well um, come the spring and then some more grasses that I've run there and then I basically stopped it right there and as you can see we're no more river and that's exactly what you want to do with a rain garden you want it to reintegrate itself back into the uh, water table um, and then there's a bit more catchment there coming off and it's again going to feed those uh, plants right there and then a little minimal will run off into the city catch basin and so that's really the goal of the uh, rain garden at the end of the day is we want it to uh, to minimize the amount of water that is in the city uh, storm sewer so it doesn't uh, 
overwhelming. And then over here is one along the driveway. Lots of water comes from the driveway, which comes off of the deck. And then again, rather than just letting it erode the driveway and the soil there, we're going to bend it around the corner and then to feed this corner garden here again in the rain garden type of idea where there's a tree, a birch there, uh, some more uh, decorative grass. And then again, right around the corner to feed the two cedars. I have a lemon uh, cedar there and another emerald green over there. And uh, not too much work. It was just digging it and routing the water so it goes where you want it to go. In this case, right over to that cedar, which of course they can never get enough water, those things. This was the latest rain garden. Um, again, on the other side of the driveway um, where we, it was just really eroded and stuff. So I said, let's just dig this up and make this into another rain garden on the other side. And there I point out that use bark, bark mulch. Uh, always bark mulch your digs that you do to keep erosion down and for a nice appearance as well. And you can see I put some drain rock and river rock in there just for some added um effects visually as well as to control some of the mulch uh, from eroding downstream as well and so it's been working really really well even though we've had a torrential downpour rains uh, for day and night uh, here on the west coast of british columbia and once again don't go straight to the road curve it around and then make the uh, make it part of a rain garden so obviously this way is a much better, much more effective way to water your garden than with uh, a uh, traditional irrigation method and much better for the environment too. And again, these plants are some of these shrubs and so on, typically um, like lots of water. And there's some drain rock there, uh, river rock just to, uh, to stop it, uh, stop any of the mulch itself from being eroded right onto the onto the road itself and again we want to try to minimize that overflow water overflow into the catch basins where a lot of your fertilizers and other types of pollutants would then go from there right out into the ocean uh, which is about a block and a half away so we want to prevent that from happening and keep our nutrients. We want the nutrients not flushed away out of the garden. We want to keep them in the garden, uh, uh, all the nutrients and fertilizers and so on that we may use uh, on the lawn or in the beds. In big rains, that can be like overflowing like a river just going down stream to the catch basin. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helped and you can certainly build upon the ideas that we've presented here. And there's a number of different methods you can use, uh, even with French drains and so on, to basically achieve the same thing.